of yours is a real champ. He got his father to post bail for me right away. And I know how much he hates to ask him for anything. What happens now? Oh, the lawyers get together and play clap hands and, and everybody tries to impress everybody else with a lot of big legal words. No, please tell me. I want to know. Well, I just meant that there's, there's no reason for you to worry. As soon as they start to ask questions, they'll see that the whole thing was trumped up. It's as simple as that. I didn't do it, honey. It's a fact. But I got a question for you. Why did you run out in the snow like that, you know? What happened, Angel? I don't know. I didn't stop to think, I guess. I saw where they were taking you and that you were in trouble, and I just wanted to get to you and help you. But I must have been five below zero out there. Why'd you go to the Peyton house, Eddie? So, it's Eddie now, huh? Not Dan. I'll tell you why. Because you said that you were afraid about the future and about the baby. And I went up to talk to the old man. About me? Yeah. I went to make a pitch. I wasn't going to let him shut you out of the money even if I had to beg him. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I knew you'd never let me go. You're as stubborn as they come. What about Mrs. Van Leiden? Honey, it's like I told you. I never touched her. She was dead when I got to the house, and that's the Lord's truth. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Your dad's been a fraud and a fake all of his life. Why believe him now? But you have to. No, it's not that. I don't think you could ever kill anybody. You lied to me. You said you were sick, and you told me you'd never lie to me. Rita, try to understand. It was for your sake. Yours and the baby's. I had to see Mr. Payton before the wedding. And that's why I told your mom I was sick, so I could get off early. And then you and Norm came by and threw me a curve. I didn't want to lie to you. Don't you see? I waited till you went to sleep. I thought you'd be none the wiser. I don't know what to believe. Trust me, please. I wish I could do something. I feel so helpless. There's something that you can do. Get well. That'll help me more than anything else in the world. Well, I better go. That Dr. Rossi will be in here breathing fire another minute. Are you sure there's no chance they might bring you to trial? Honey, put it out of your mind. You know, everything's gonna turn out just fine. The worst thing you can do is to worry about it. Okay, thanks for coming, Dad. Goodbye, Angel. I love you. Seeing me. I really have no choice, do I? I thought about taking a long drive today just to avoid the knocking on the door. Hmm. Well, I would have been waiting for your return. Mr. Baden? Betty, I know that you were with Adrian just before her death. Please don't deny it. There's no point. I was half asleep. I heard voices. Two women arguing. And I was much too familiar with those voices not to recognize them. One was Adrian's and one was yours. I got up, made my way to the landing, but you were gone. 
And Adrian was at the bottom of the stair. I didn't push her. No matter what you think, I didn't push her, I swear it. Tell me what happened. I had to see her. I had to find out once and for all the truth about her and Stephen. I called her. She didn't want to see me. She refused. But I had to know. Well, you came over anyway. The moment I stepped in the door, it started. She knew exactly why I'd come. She taunted me with it. She ridiculed me. She started to walk away from me up the stairs. I followed her. We were arguing. When we got to the landing, she turned on me. She was smiling. And she admitted to me that she'd lied, that I'd driven Stephen to her because I didn't believe him. She said he was hers now. He belonged to her. She shouted at me. She made a sudden move towards me. Her hand went up as if to hit me, and I... I turned away. She lost her balance. I... I don't know. It just all happened so suddenly. Of course. It was an accident. It was an accident. It wouldn't have happened if I hadn't gone to the house. But you couldn't help yourself. Well, I don't know what to do. I've got to go to the police. They've arrested an innocent man. You know, Sandra. <laughs> Betty, now you listen to me. You're not to do anything. You hear me? You're not to do anything at all. But they've arrested Rita's father. Now, if they put him on trial... Betty Jacks will never stand trial. Take my word for it. How can you be so sure? I am sure. But if you come forward, you may have to stand trial. And, Betty, that would be ruinous. But how can I live with it? Stephen's already asked me questions. Eddie Jack saw someone. It's sure to come out. Continue to deny any knowledge of it. I'll back you up. If you don't come forward, Stephen won't be able to prove anything. And he won't want to. He has his own reputation to think of. I don't understand you, Mr. Baden. She was your fiance. When you came in here... You I... thought I was going to accuse you? Cart you off to jail? Yes. I never loved Adrian Betty. But you were going to marry her. Oh, yes, for my own reasons. But that's all past history. The point is that I would never have brought Adrian to Peyton Place if you hadn't turned your back on me. If you hadn't made it quite clear that you wanted no part of the life I can make possible for you. Always on the condition that I turn away from Stephen. Yes, of course. And now you know why. I'm only sorry that you had to learn it so painfully. I drove him to her because I wouldn't believe him. Betty. It would have happened anyway, because she was my fiance. Stephen will always be driven by the need to hurt me, no matter where it leads him and no matter who else suffers. You can't change that. All you can do is walk away from it, just as you have. I have to go to the police. You can't, Betty. Remember what happened to Rodney? All those months of anguish? I can't help myself. Have you, have you really thought this through? Have you thought of the sordid motive people would make for it? Rejected wife takes revenge on the other woman. Oh, that's what it will sound like, Betty. Like a trashy pulp magazine. A crime of passion. They have a case against you, Betty. Everything you've accomplished will be lost. Try it my way. I promise you, everything will be all right. How can I live with it? By remembering what you've just told me. Adrian died by accident. By accident, Betty. <laughs> just did. It was a matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Anyway, look on the bright side of it. The bride is no longer with us, the wedding is off, so the will remains the same. And if the old man takes a fancy to someone else in the next month or two, what then? Oh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Tell me the truth, Eddie. Did you have anything to do with Adrian's death? I told you. I walked in and she was lying there. 
I'm clean as a whistle. All right. You've got your bail, you've got your lawyer. Let's call it a day. Glad to. Oh, about my um, financial responsibility. I earn $128 a week plus tip, which means that I could pay you back at the rate of about... Cut the comedy, Eddie. All I want from you is that promissory note. Where is it? You shouldn't have gone to my room. That was a nervous thing to do. Even Mrs. Hewitt thought it was a little strange. Where is it? Well, you think I'm gonna leave it lying around under my hair tonic or something? It's in a safe deposit box at the bank. All locked up safe and cozy. Get it for me. On Sunday. If you've told Peyton anything... Told Peyton anything? What kind of a clown do you think I am? I'm in this thing up to my ears. That's exactly where you'd be looking for an out. It's a funny kind of an out. How do you figure that I'm gonna double-cross you without telling the world what I went to that house to do? You seem to forget. I've been sent up once. Both of our names are on that note. If Martin Payton ever got a hold of it, I could kiss fresh air goodbye for the rest of my life. Just make sure that note's on my desk ten minutes after the bank opens Monday morning. Sure. I'll be here with bells on. So long. Eddie, don't try any con games with me. You'll regret it, I promise you. Get yourself a businessman's lunch, Les. I think I hear your stomach growling. Oh. Sorry. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. You've doomed yourself to envy and hate, Stephen, because you're afraid your life would have no meaning without them. My office first thing this morning, with that note, remember? That ice you're skating on, it's beginning to crack. And you're going to go under if you don't get that note. Why are you, Betty? The fact that she took my husband away from me, there's a certain bond in that. Betty. Well, what do you want me to say? The truth. 